Welcome everyone. This is Eric L. Donovan, the Mindset Disruption Strategist, and we are here for another episode of Redefining Success. And joining me today is Matt Schaup, who is a serial entrepreneur, a lover of Jesus, a family guy. He happens to own a painting business. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about his book, uh, Painted Baby, which I got to a little bit of sneak. We're going to make him tell us the story um, because how he came up with that name is hilarious and worth telling. So, Matt, thank you so much for being here. Eric, thanks for having me. Really, really a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah. So, hey, before we get into all the stuff we're going to talk about today, let's talk about the most important stuff. Tell my audience a little bit about you outside of Painted Baby and entrepreneurship yeah. and all of that. Yeah, I mean, I have an amazing family, wife, and, and children, and I love spending a lot of time with them. I'm, I'm a busy business guy, but people don't, what they don't realize about me is I uh, make a lot of time for family and love them. I do this all for them, and I have a really, really big purpose and legacy to leave for my family. So I'm excited to share and, and talk about that. How, how many kids? How long have you been married? So yeah, we're coming up on 19 years in August, and okay. I've got two kids, 15-year-old son, Riley. And he's as tall as me now. So that's a that's a thing. And he's, he'll, he'll be taller than me. And then Haley, my daughter, she's 12. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. That's a sweet, sweet spot. Don't blink. It'll be gone before you yeah. know it. Oh, yeah. I'm speaking from someone who knows. Hey, Matt, tell me, if, if you look at life today, right now, just today, what are you most passionate about right now? Pouring into other people and doing things that that matter. I feel like a lot of people come to me with the baseline X's and O's business question. And and I have an ability to give them something deeper and greater than what they were looking for. I'll answer the business question. Um, but it's important to know that your story has meaning and value and impact. And when you can really dig into that, um, you can help people in a greater capacity. Oh, and I just love doing that. I literally I have coffee all day, hang out with fun people. <laughs> I'm on my fifth coffee, I think, and uh, help make their life leadership and, and business better. It says here you're a Spanish coffee addict. So if you had five today, real. you literally are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Hey, how do so as you as helping people and really kind of helping them to kind of dig deeper than just business? What's the best way you're getting to live that out right now? Yeah, I'm I'm in the business community. So like like I said, a lot of uh, had a gentleman in here the other day. He had a marketing question. We ended up talking about really abusive relationship that he grew up in and how he mm -hmm. carries programs of uh, betrayal and lack of trust. And it's running from his personal life into his marriage and his business. He left. He's like, hey, great coffee. I thought you were going to talk about ROI on two different marketing things we were breaking down on an Excel sheet. We did that in about 90 seconds and just talked about life. And he really he, he left and said, I really needed that right now. So mm -hmm. I find myself in those in those conversations. I've been able to take all of my passions in life, and I love doing crazy once in a lifetime things that people say can't be done. Mm -hmm. and, and I've really built businesses around things that I love in life that get to help people, and I enjoy them. So it's mm -hmm. not work for me; it's work for Emily. When I come home at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's a long day. Well, how is your day's great? Still working. So there's that going on. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, that's what I get to do all day. I love it. So tell us a little bit about your story. I mean, somebody who's that passionate, somebody who's that, um, you know, what I find is a lot of times passion is born out of pain. Yeah. Born out of yeah. hardship. Had, so had lots of that. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that if you could. Well, and I sit here and smile and, and laugh about it. And it's, and, and I'm happy that I can do that because I wasn't a happy guy for a long time. I, I built my business out of anger and flying the finger to the world and, you know, the the things that happened to me up to that point. So I kind of break my life into these different phases, but was severely bullied growing up, lived in Northern New Jersey. And when I look back through, literally was out there last summer, visiting the one friend I stay in touch with, we pulled out the fifth grade yearbook, I left the end of fourth grade, here's the fifth grade yearbook, here's my buddy, Chris, with all these people, dead, dead, disappeared, thrown in front of a train, probably dead, prison, wow. prison, just boom, boom, boom. So growing up, uh, I was really bright and I finished my schoolwork early. So I'm playing WWF wrestling. Me and Chris were wrestling in the classroom, you know, hitting each other with chairs, <laughs> getting in trouble. And they didn't keep me busy. They're like, you're going to be a troublemaker your whole life. So I was just branded and given this identity of mm. that. Plus I'm getting picked on. I was a very easy target. And I found some purpose and some certainty in business. We moved out to Colorado, asked my parents for some money. And, and again, 10 years ago, I would have shared this story. It was a cool business story. 
But it's like, no, this really ingrained into my psyche, my belief system, business and money and pursuing those things really mm -hmm. gave me confidence and certainty and, you know, searching for something and found it in a very worldly, very tangible uh, control is a big thing because I was just in an environment where I felt like there wasn't a lot of control and, and, and a lack of it sometimes. So yeah, definitely painful memories. And my initial response, which was more of the knee jerk anger reaction, that's how I behaved. That's how I did business. That's how, you know, that rolled into everything that I did. And then, you know, the final business straw, it's a great story. I got kicked out of a bank. The guy said, put all your stuff in a box. He said something else. You're fired. I hated the job anyway. And then he's like, maybe you should do that painting thing. He tied the tie up and kicked me out of the bank. So I literally, I gave him a couple middle fingers, walked out of the bank. I said, I'm going to go become a millionaire and, mm. and was mad, was mad about it. So, so yeah, those are some of the experiences that I've had to learn to look back on and turn that anger into appreciation because I wouldn't trade any of that sitting here today because I wouldn't be able to share this story with you sure. and serve people with it. Yeah. What were some of the key things that, I mean, so you can go through the anger, but where were the pivot yeah. points that showed you how to turn that into fuel? <laughs> the the pivot points that turned anger into fuel? Yeah. Man, it's a great fuel. You just need a spark, right? It's it's a it's a big bucket of gasoline. Well, okay, so and let me it, change does, this. Maybe a fuel yeah. that you can actually use uh -huh. to launch as, to, as opposed to burn everything down. Maybe that's a better question. So I'm, I'm naturally a, a launcher. So I'm very, very creative. I'm the idea guy. So literally standing there in the bank parking lot, I worked for college painters for four years in college. Okay. It's all I knew how to do. So I'm standing there like, what do I do? And all I knew is I had to have an answer when I got home because mm. I, I need to have an answer. I can't come home, tell Emily I'm fired and don't have a plan. So I called some painters, said, hey, let's start this thing. And I mean, I'm just very much... Again, 10 years old, right? I want a boom box, $200. I mow 15 lawns, I'm good. And, and that was the same thing. I need $3,000 in 30 days, break it down, get it done. I'm very good at that. Mm. The business structure, launching the idea. I was horrible with people, management systems, and getting out of my own way. So I, I don't know if that answers answers your question. Well, but it does, but what? Yeah. so where did you kind of learn to shift that though, to be better with people, to be better, to kind of get out of your own way? What, what really kind of has helped you do that? So from 2005 to 2012, I could, I don't think anybody lasted more than six to nine months or one painting season with the company. I started really getting into like personal development and coaching and working with coaches. I'm working with a uh, he's an old school guy, used to work for Tony Robbins. They, he does NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. They talk about your beliefs and your patterns and all this stuff. And I'm just having a tangent. I'm five coffees in, right? But oh, I can't believe this guy just quit and I've got to fire her because she sucks and they can't do this right and blah. And he, I'm, a, I'm an aggressive guy, right? Hard to anybody tell me what to do. He's like, Matt, shut up. Mm. You're the problem. They're not the problem. Do you ever stop and think about that? Listen to yourself. He goes, let me record you and play yourself back to you. Mm. And he just called me out. Like he, he checked me up against the, the boards and said, you are the problem. And, and I knew he was right. My initial response was, no, you're not right. And I, and I stormed out of there. And he said, hey, you either keep doing it this way or you look at things a different way. Yeah. And, and again, it's all because of these programs and patterns. And he really um, gave me what I needed to hear and how I needed to hear it at a particular time. And I had really two options to go down at that road, right? I had, I got called out. I had to make a consideration and then commit to change. And I talk mm -hmm. about that in Painted Baby. I said, let's, let's look at this other way to do life and do business and, and do faith. Cause like, I'm a Jesus follower at this point, 2012, it was Oh one, I gave my life to Christ. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I should be following all of these biblical principles of love, patience, kindness, goodness, mm -hmm. but I'm not <laughs> my, my story, my past story and hurts were overriding mm -hmm. who God designed me to be. Yeah. Yeah. You, you mentioned painted baby. Talk a little bit about what's the inspiration for that. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> how you came up with that book and that story. We literally painted a baby on accident. <laughs> and I thought for a long time that sales was all about being buttoned up five star a plus everything's perfect, you know, kind of a thing. And that people want to hear that. And that's why they hire you and you need to be the best of the best always. Um, we live in a culture and a society, you go on social media, right? Like it's yeah. the perfect life, life, vacation, everything. So that's how I sold. I'm in a sales appointment about to close the biggest deal of my life. So I thought, and, and Bill, my, 
customer wouldn't sign the contract and I'm giving him the shiny marketing brochure, all the pitches. And he's like, cut the crap, throws the thing aside. Tell me about a time you screwed up and what you did about it. And I've never been asked that before mm. to, to sell something. Right. So I thought about, okay, we painted the wrong color on a house. Once we actually painted the right color on the wrong house. <laughs> that was a little more intriguing to him, but, but, but he was hooked. He, he did what you did. He's like, really? He wants to know more. And I said, hey, I go, we, we painted a baby once. We literally had a paint sprayer <laughs> explode all over this baby. And I can't believe I'm sharing this with you. But he was he was forcing me in a way into this. He was right, right in my face about it. And then I go to share the story. So just a few years before this sales appointment in 2011, it's 2008. We're just painting a bunch of houses over in, in the town of Windsor. And last day, painters getting ready to spray some garage doors with black semi-gloss paint. Mm -hmm. Mama and baby mama comes out, sweet lady admiring the paint job, bringing the guys drinks. And she happened to be standing behind the painter as he pulls the trigger. And a one in a hundred million chance accident happens. This gun jams and poof, paint everywhere. I painted a baby, painted the painter, the baby, the landscape, everything. Yeah. Um, and that's a bad day. Like that's, a, that's right. a bad day in business. And I'm sitting here telling this story to the customer. Well, he said, what did you do about it? And I took him through how we handled it, addressed it, took ownership. And he shakes my hand, signs a $60,000 contract. And my, my mind was blown. So I, I've gone on this journey since that day to really understand that, hey, we, we paint this picture of perfection. We overpromise and then under deliver mm. all the time. Right. And so the other person has to do that and they keep posturing. You've been in these conversations. Yeah. right? Well, business yeah. is great. Revenue this. And hey, I got a, I got a situation with my wife. Like we're having a hard time. Whoa, he's human. Oh, okay. I'm human too. Yeah. And whoever goes first with that vulnerability, the other person will always follow if they're ready to have that conversation. But that's where you get to know that person. You build mm -hmm. trust and connection. And then that's what builds the business is because of that trust and connection. Mm -hmm. It's not the, it's not the shiny, it's not the shiny stuff. Yeah. So yeah, the book is a, is a compilation of a lot of my stories and other business owners stories of people that decided to change their story because they weren't happy with it. And just the process that I went through it's a very fun, you know, touchy feely, inspirational message. But sure. then I put a framework to it. How do you tell a story? Why? How do you change your story? What are the objections? And that's that's pain to baby. It, mm. It's fun. It took me seven years to write it though. Did you? Yeah, I chickened you wrote, out. You wrote one book before. You, that's your second book. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote a book in 2011, become an award winning company, and you know, I, I wasn't identifying as an author and really understanding what it is to be an author. It was like, hey, I'm going to write a book. I've got a, a, biz, a big business card now, right? I thought if I wrote it, people would buy it. And that's not the case. Um, had no idea that, you know, you actually write a book for the reader. Like there, <laughs> there's, there's something, right? So I, I have studied under some really amazing authors and people that have worked with amazing authors. Mike McAllowicz has been a huge uh, just contributor to to my encouragement and, and skill set development. He's an awesome guy, and um, yeah, I started it in 2015, and I started and stopped four, maybe five times, mm -hmm. until uh, yeah, 2021. I said we're we're doing this, and we're launching it. We're launching it, and then it was it. Do you know Ron Blue? Do you know that name at all? Mm -mm, no, he's gotten older. He was really involved with Larry Burkett and Crown Financial Ministries and some of those groups. If you're familiar with any of okay. that in their history, anyway, I've heard that, but I don't know him. It, it, it's a quick Ron. tangent. Just that Ron Blue, I told him one time I was writing a book, and he said, "I'm so sorry." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "I've never known God to call a man to write just one book, and so if you think this one is hard, just um, wait." <laughs> yeah, no, and it's it's this it's this amazing process. You call it amazing. It's interesting. You, you, you're right in the same wish of the keys. You're loving it and then hating it. And then, oh my gosh. And what's yeah. going on? It's a very personal thing. I mean, it's a very, very personal thing, but you know, I struggled for a long time. I was taking too many people's negative feedback and criticism mm -hmm. and that, that voice, right. It's your own voice. Many times out, oh, no one's going to buy this. No one bought your first book. It's like, well, yeah, your first book was good. It wasn't great. You didn't know what you were doing. How right. was your first paint job? How was your first yeah. lawn that you mowed? It's, it's just, that's just life. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been out, been out a couple months and I'm loving what people are sharing with me. It's, it's, it's impacting lives and that's what it was meant to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you get to coach other business owners and things like that, what do you, what do you feel like is the biggest obstacle standing between them and um, breakthrough? Is because they, they think breakthrough is going to come from some new business tactics. So the gentleman that came in, he had a marketing question. 
like you got something else going on. I, I share a lot that your business will only grow to the degree that you have. And it will only be as healthy as you are personally. And a lot of people go, no, I can compartmentalize that. No, if you stink with money, you're going to stink with money everywhere. If you're angry, you're going to be angry everywhere. I, I can attest to that. You think everybody's out to get you. So when you can really capture somebody at their core, dig into their story. I love digging into people's stories and just seeing there's usually, you know, a couple of moments that everybody has from their upbringing that, that something happened there that is not serving them. It's sabotaging them. Mm. And it might even be packaged up and look really nice, yeah. but it's killing them inside. Yeah. Mm. Mm. As you look at, do you still have the painting business today? I do. Yeah. 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 And so you're doing painting. You've got, I'm just trying to look at everything here. I mean, you've got, you've written the book. You're going, you're taking a trip. You're taking some people to Spain. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So painting le led into roofing gutters. So it's, it's a combination of home services. And then, you know, I'm really focusing right now just on my, my personal brand and obviously, you know, I'm writing books, speaking at events, but I studied in Spain in college, fell in love with the, the country, love sharing it with people. So I'll always bring back coffee, cook dinners for people here. But I took a group, I took our team last year and we did a leadership retreat, an experiential really out of their comfort zone retreat. And it went off really well. And I'm taking a group in September to hike uh, 70 miles of the Camino de Santiago. It's a 550 mile pilgrimage trail through Northern Spain. And we're going to focus on uh, really deep disconnect and unplug, recenter, refocus, and then restore and rejuvenate. So just busy, busy American business people that just want to dig in to themselves and be a little selfish for a week, right? And, yeah. and fill their cups and see where they might be off base or off compass a little bit with their life, their business, their leadership. And, and then, I mean, I just love Spain and, and these guys trust me inherently. So, I mean, I'm taking them to some of the coolest just restaurants and scenery. Right. And I've got some, I've got a couple surprises in there that <laughs> they don't know about. Don't let them out here. No, out. no, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody. <laughs> Nobody knows. Hey, um, as you look at kind of the next three to five years, what are, mm -hmm. what do you continue to see to evolve and what, I mean, can you even see kind of what you think is next? And... You know, I'm just sharing my message, speaking as much as I can with, with the audience and people that I'm called to serve. I'm finding that, you know, I, I have this business message, but I end up finding a lot of Jesus following men that have had some really interesting and rough upbringing. So I've got this real big vision regarding helping men and in, in their leadership capacity through some of these adventures on the Camino. Um, talking right now about a, a potential you know, TV series mm. and, and what just visioning what that looks like. So just, again, sharing more of my story and my passions with people and, and letting God lead it. Because I know for such a long time, I was so focused, oh, this is what it is and I'm going to go do it. And yeah. now, we're, now we're over yeah. here and how'd that happen? <laughs> Hey, if you could go back, I mean, so you said you moved, to, when did you, you were 15 when you moved to Colorado? Is that right? I was 10. I was 10. 10. Yeah, back in like 90. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, and that was about the time you started your, your first, your mowing lawns and things. It was still about we, 10. We moved to Colorado in May or June, and I think July, I was cutting grass. Yeah, I was literally touched down in Colorado, and that's when the business started. So, if you were to look at that, if your 10-year-old self, and maybe kind of take 10-year journeys if you could... But it would be interesting to know, like, what mm -hmm. do you feel like the great less, greatest lessons or biggest surprises? Like what you thought it was going to be. This is Redefining Success is the name of the show, right? Yeah. Like what you yeah. thought the journey was going to look like versus what it really was. So I think that that 10 to 20, it was figuring it out. So I get asked the question a lot, like, like the influence my parents had. I asked them for money and they said, go figure out a way to make your own money. They said, go figure it out. What an amazing thing to ask somebody. And I, and I figured a lot of stuff out on my own, just you know, finances, business, life. How do, you, how do you go from a boy to a man? And, and then I get to, to 20, right? I launched this business and it really was this pursuit of things that I thought would bring fulfillment, joy. And, and it really wasn't. Like I, I share that I climbed this million dollar mountain mm -hmm. and I'm standing there and nobody's with me because they all left and I was kind of an ass to be around. Yeah. And that's when that, transition really happened into, Hey, like there's a bigger, there's a bigger story. So I, I just, I've been on this journey of just really discovering myself and my story and how I can bring value to people and, and where God's called me to be. And now I'm at a place where like I can go do whatever I want from a standpoint of 
could could stop this business, start this business. But you know, I don't I don't want to get another 10, 20 years down the road and look back and say, you know, I should have been doing this. This is what I was really called to do. Mm. If that makes mm. sense. No, that yeah. So it was figure it was figure it out, chasing stuff that I thought I thought I figured it out and I didn't. And now maybe I think I'm figuring it out and I still don't, <laughs> right? You always get you always get these surprises and these turns. But it's always nice to look back, like what would you tell your 10 and your 20 year old self? And you know, just get, just just trying to be better every day. Uh, don't compare journeys to other people's journeys. That that's a, that'll that's a killer in yeah. so many capacities. Yeah, that's a that'll do it. Um, Matt, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you want to make sure you got a chance to talk about while we were on the show today? Yeah, I mean, you speak to a lot of um, Christ followers and, and yeah. Jesus followers, and I don't know how much time we have left to, to yeah, share no, my please, story, but I don't I don't have this faith story of this big, amazing, you know, like got hit by a car and I died and I woke up and I saw <laughs> myself. I was, I was drunk in a field one new year's Eve. I was 19. I was you know, pretty addicted to drugs and alcohol and, and just chasing things that, that I shouldn't have been chasing. And I, I would never talk to you, man. You're a, you're a judgmental, mm-hmm. annoying Christian. You're, you're a hypocrite. Cause all these people that I had all these experiences with that that judged me like in the name of Jesus. Oh, you, you're drunk again. You can't come to my Bible study. Really? Like, yeah, I'm drunk. Cause I, I got issues. Like, you should right. love on me. Right. So, so I'm literally sitting here, like just, just pushing, pushing that away, pushing that away from all these people that are proclaiming Jesus standing on the Bible box in the, on the mm-hmm. college campus and um, get drunk in a field, get lost, trying to rummage my way through this, this house to, to mm-hmm. continue getting home. And a car pulls up, guy puts me in handcuffs, throws me in the back of a police car. Never been handcuffed in the back of a, of a police car, but I'm sitting back there. And um, he had the control, the power, the authority to punish me, to judge me, to bring me to prison. Mm-hmm. And he told me that. He made that clear with some nice police talk. It started off like that. And then he says to me, he's like, hey, what's your story? Why are you drunk at two in the morning, almost dead in a field? Like, What's your story? So, I, yeah. so I'm remembering that. And I don't remember what I told him because I was too too intoxicated to do so. But he said, if you're if you're not going to die because you're so drunk, like if you know how to get home, that means you still have some wits to you. I've got a busy night of picking up more guys like you. So he just starts talking to me. He's like, hey, tell me. And I don't remember what I told him, but we get to the house and um, he, he nicely <laughs> removes me from the car, takes off the handcuffs. He's like, your door right here, walks me up to the door. What? And he's like, hey, he goes, I'm not I'm not taking you to jail. I'm not writing you a ticket. Um, but I do want you to, to to think about this. You know, next time I see you, if I ever see you, I hope you're making better decisions. There's people out there that care about you and mm. probably don't want you dead in a field. And 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 did he quote a Bible verse? No, he didn't say anything. About Jesus didn't say anything about a Bible. He just loved on me. His story met my story right where it was at, yeah. and he cared about me. He didn't judge me. I don't know if he was a follower or not. It was a male Fort Collins police officer in. Mm. 2001 the new year's day of that of that early morning and i wake up the next day and i'm like huh that experience changed my perspective it made me forget not forget but push aside all of these people that drove me away and remember the other people that were in my life cheering me on pushing me towards my faith Mm -hmm. because i had been exploring but wanting nothing to do with it right sometimes you know if you're listening you're, you're you're so ready to just 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 throw it away like that's when you turn sometimes yeah and i did so a couple couple weeks later i gave my life to god gave my life to jesus and really started started Mm -hmm. digging in and and it's funny because i didn't realize the the power of that moment till till just a couple months ago and i'm sharing this a lot more on on podcasts so whether you're a, a believer or not just the smile that you have the opportunity to give somebody at a coffee shop and maybe you don't because you're just having a short day Right. That could mean something to them. Just a couple of kind words could mean something to them. They could be drunk in a field, about to die in a ditch. Mm. You know, I've lost I've lost some friends to to that kind of stuff. So be be a light in their story, be possibly a turning point. You don't need to go out with that goal everywhere, but just think about that. Just think about that as you're sharing your faith and you're sharing your story. You don't need to quote verses. And it's great if you know them and they ask you for them, but sometimes they just need to be loved when yeah. when nobody's loving on them. So no, oh, that's so powerful. That's so powerful. Hey, Matt, if people want to follow what you're doing, they want to kind of keep up. Mm-hmm. I know about this leadership trip, any of that stuff. What's yeah. the best way for them to do that? Yeah, everything's there, mattshalk.com. Just go to the website. I've got free tools. I've got everything on the books and the and the leadership and then a, a set of free tools that they can download just to help help them grow and, and develop. And 
And then I've got all my social links. If you want to social media, follow me. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, Matt, we come to the end of the show. My last question is always the same. Um, you said you know your answer, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 So in three generations, what do you hope your great grandchildren remember about you? That our great grandpa changed the family tree and what the shop name means and stands for. Mm. Mm. That's powerful. I have a feeling that's written down somewhere. Yeah, it's just, it's 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 everything about me. Yeah. yeah. So when the days get hard, you gotta you gotta remember that because yeah. if you look at look at, I encourage everybody look at your life in that perspective when you're ready to throw in a towel or give up or take the take the easy way out. That's so good. That's so good, Matt. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a joy. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate you, man. All right. So we will be with you again next time. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Have a great day.